Gomez. She and Angela have had their first and only meal of the day, two microwave burgers which cost just one pound each. Angela wants to try and help Joanna find a way she can afford to eat healthily again, and she wants to start by having a heart-to-heart -heart about what she's surviving on now. Carry on drinking cups of tea for the for, instead of a proper meal, yeah. and I'm not talking veg, you know, meat and two veg or anything like that, but just a proper hot meal. You are going to worry. Yeah. Something's going to give, yeah. and you know, and you need to be there for. You know, yeah. Carly, if, you know, and you can't if you carry on like that. You'll get there. You will. You'll be all right. Yeah, you will. Come on. Oh, no. You will. It's not, you know, it's food, yeah. you know. So it's not it's her. Yeah, of I course. But, you know. how much. Go on. You've just got to look after your health because, you know, in, in the nicest possible way, you're no good to anyone, least of all your daughter, if you're not healthy and fit. Yeah, you're going to be fine, yeah? Yep. Yeah, we're going to help you do it. As bedtime approaches, James is heading to his temporary home, just down the corridor from Patrick. It's unbelievable. Do you really look forward to this? Do you look forward to eating tin food? You know, I've just left Patrick now, he's, that's it. He's got nothing, till he's, till he's boiled egg in the morning. It makes it all very, very real. Today, the chefs face a very real challenge to see if they can create healthy home-cooked meals on the budget their hosts have for food. It's a school day in Surrey. As ever, Joanna makes sure Carly has a filling breakfast. What's your favourite? Egg, uh, bacon sandwich. Bacon sandwich, nice. It's a good start to the day for Carly. Right. Mm. Have a good day. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Bye. Yeah, good luck with your exam. But that's not the case for her mum. This morning, like most mornings, Joanna is skipping breakfast. How many cups of you morning have I've you had? one had? today. You've had one today? Yep. OK, that's your second one. This is just the second of the 20 sugary cups of tea Joanna has each day instead of food. It's 8am in Watford, and pensioner Patrick starts each day the same way with one egg and the occasional slice of toast. Well, I've had my toast. I want you to have the egg. Thank you, Joe. Go and have it. No, yeah. what I do is uh, I, I leave it for Don't just... leave it for, for lunch. <laughs> no, I leave it for lunch and uh, right. I, I like to make a sandwich out of it. OK. Well, you and I that... appreciate that. Thank you, well, just to right. It's all right. I'm, I'm OK with my toast. Yeah. In Mansfield, Richard's waking up to the reality of the Miller's finances. It has just been a matter of, of pride. Things have got so tough they've considered doing what hundreds of thousands of Brits will do this year, going to a food bank. And I can remember saying to Darren, I've just been given this information on um, a food bank. And I said, I think we're seriously going to have to think about it. I think it was just pride, really, that stopped us mm. from going. A food bank is there for, to help people like yourselves, you know what I mean? Just have to go through and explain your situation to other people. You kind of feel like quite embarrassed about it and... You have to ask. You can't just close your doors to your house and just sit here and say we're hungry, you know, because we have no money. Mm. Unlike the Millers, Joanna uses her local food bank regularly. Today, she's collecting another emergency food package. Surrey is an incredibly wealthy county, if not one of the most wealthy in the UK. Mm. I mean, I was gobsmacked to think that you would have need food banks and there'd be a crisis, yeah. you know. I think that's what makes it all the more um, reason to set it up. We yeah. have very high levels of deprivation, and in the first seven months, we fed just under a 1,000 people. A 1,000 And people. we're the smallest borough in the county, so wow. it just shows that the need is there, and we're yeah, continuing yeah, yeah. to grow every week. The Trussell Trust, the UK's largest provider of food banks, says use of their banks has tripled in the last year. But this isn't a permanent solution for Joanna. Food banks can't give an unlimited supply of food. So when you came the first time, how did you feel? 
I was very nervous the first time, sure. still quite, quite a nerve-wracking thing. Yeah. And, and also, do you think it's been a big emotional support, feeling it, that you're not by yourself? It has. So I come here, I know, I see other people that are in the same boat, so I sit and look around. It's not just me struggling, and as much mm. as I'm probably uncomfortable, they were at some point as mm. well. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. It's clear each household is stretched to the limit. Now the chefs are going to see for themselves the challenges their hosts face. They're going to have to shop on the same budget their hosts have to spend on dinner. For the Millers, it's nearing the end of the month when money is at its tightest. 69 for dinner. That's per head. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to be done for a bit of shoplifting, isn't it? So that's basically nearly a pound for each of you for dinner. Yeah. Jesus. I figured it out, about one pound, four pence. So double it, two pound and eight pence. Yeah. So I've got to go. I've got to go shopping because I haven't got long. Well, good luck to you, and right. don't get mugged. Don't yeah. get mugged with that. No, no, I don't no, think yeah. so. No, yeah. no. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. See you later. I, I, look, I look you out, yeah. The chefs are up and running. Well, there's a lot of red stickers here. You know, there's no question about a lot of red stickers. In Leatherhead, Angela thinks her best bet is to find independent shops. Do you know, I can't see any butchers, can't see any sort of fruit or veg places. The only thing so far has just been a little baker's. James is looking for his ingredients at Watford Market. I've got a few things, which is a bit of a head start. I've got two nice potatoes in there. I've got an onion. Decent sized onion as well. That was 48p. And then I pushed the budget out. I went to 78 pence. And I got a... a nice fresh tomato already. So, 78p of my budget is gone already. Angela's in the supermarket Joanna goes to in search of cheap ready meals. But Angela's got lucky and bagged a bargain on discounted fresh food. I bought six pieces of chicken for £1.50. So I've got £1.50 left of my budget to spend. Richard's struggling to find the food he wants at a price he can afford. He seems to find it easier to track down something he can buy in the processed food aisle. Family lasagna for two ninety-eight. dollars oh, I couldn't make it for that. Now I'm after something for pensioners. What about chicken? Chicken legs? Chicken legs, yeah, three ten a kilo. Maybe I'll try one of those then. 78. That'll have to do. Cut it in half. You better cut it in half for me as well. James's next stop is to buy the rest of his ingredients to make a chicken curry. Meanwhile, Richard is still searching for the fresh ingredients he wants. I'm looking for a piece of salmon to feed seven people altogether. Now he's torn between wanting to give the Millers the kind of nutritious meal they used to enjoy or sticking to the budget. What's the damage, Fred? £11.33. Go for it. There goes the budget. Right. James managed to get his single chicken leg and individual veg for £1.56, just below budget. But the rice and spice for his curry have taken him over by £1.12. It's, it's so difficult. I cannot tell you how hard this was. Uh, because when you're trying to cook for four or six, it's a lot easier. But when you're buying stuff individually, it just costs you so much more money. Five minutes and you're ready, sweet? Okay, yeah. All right. With rice and spice left over, James hopes the overspend will become an investment in many more of the curries Patrick loves. You can have the best bit, you can have the thigh. Richard knows he's gone way over budget by buying fresh salmon. But his cooking tips are also useful with budget ingredients like frozen fish, still healthier than pre-prepared food. I'm going to do you a lovely, lovely poached salmon, mm. just in a little Thai broth with some jasmine rice. Sounds delicious. <laughs> so how did you find it for shopping on a budget? Very, very difficult. Yeah. And the technique is simple enough for a busy working family. Lauren's just trying to absorb everything that's happening so he can repeat it. Yeah, pretty much. Piece of salmon. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. 
Richard also knows this dish will stretch over more than one mealtime. And there will be plenty of broth left over as well, because when we poach the salmon, we're going to use some of it, we'd be able to make another dish of it maybe tomorrow, just like a little soup of it, thicken it up slightly, put a little bit of rice into it, boil up the rice and the broth that's left over, and your most wonderful soup. Would you like a carrot? Eat yep. a carrot. Please, give me. Eat a carrot. That will make my day that you eat a carrot. All right? Is that good? Mm. Yeah? You love vegetables, don't you? I do like good. Mm. That's a good thing. Angela thinks Joanna could also afford fresh ingredients if she spread them across more than one meal. This is a big cabbage now. Yeah. This is going to last That's you a right. good week. And so, then I'll find with the carrots as well. I'd probably actually make a coleslaw out of it. Hey, I was week. thinking that as well today. Uh, I do like it. It's something my granddad's made for years. It's homemade yeah. coleslaw. There's enough of the half-priced chicken for tomorrow as well. You could even yeah. take one drumstick to you for lunch. Yeah. But ultimately, by buying the extra veg to go with dinner, Angela too has gone over budget. When was the last time you ate a meal like this? I'm not sure, to be honest. Probably a while now. Yeah, quite a while. Bon appétit. Nice. Hey, nice. <laughs> At the Miller's house, Richard's freshly cooked meal is a success. Did you taste that salmon? Yeah, yeah I've tried it, yeah. What do you think? It's really nice. Fresh cooking is nicer than the light chicken nuggets and stuff. And I did enjoy it today. It was really nice. There you go, Patrick. Oh, my God, Chicken James. curry, is that right? Oh, yeah, it's my favourite. <laughs> is that your right? Yeah, honestly. And uh, I know so you wanted much. a tea towel, so yeah. there you go. That's lovely. Thanks a minute. I, I just can't get at it quick enough. It's so long yeah. since I had a chicken dinner. Right? You're a fantastic cook, James. You don't fair do soon. I'll try. Mm. You haven't seen all the washing up. I don't, I don't mind. I'll do that. The chefs have given their hosts a few tips to help them cook more, but they couldn't stay within budget. So Patrick's had a, a decent meal at last, but it um, kind of makes me feel a bit depressed, really, because I didn't achieve it in the budget. I did actually genuinely think I was going to be able to do it. Um, so um, although we had a great meal, it's still tinged with sadness. Yeah, I feel I failed, really. If the chefs want to succeed at the budget banquet, they'll need to be a lot more creative with their pennies. The next morning, and Angela thinks she'll be able to give Joanna recipe ideas on her budget. But first, she wants Joanna to confront her current sugar consumption in all that sweet tea. So if we sort of say each spoon, because they're quite big spoons, you know, you do, uh, say, five grams. So that's 15 grams of sugar in every cup you have. And you do 20 cups. Averages about 300 grams of sugar a day. So you're looking at over two kilos of sugar a week. That's halfway through the week. That's Monday to Wednesday. This is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That is how much sugar you have. Are you shocked by seeing that, Joanna? I am. That's an awful lot to look at it. I'm surprised I'm not bouncing off the walls. No, I'm surprised. From now on, Angela wants Joanna to start the day properly. I'm going to make her just the simplest, cheapest of breakfast, which is a lovely porridge um, with the sweetness from bananas. What's in there? Do you like porridge? I do. You do? Hallelujah. Lots of sugar on top. No, well, we're not going to maybe do that bit. So the banana, again, it's this, you know, it's going to give you energy for a start, which is what you lack in the morning. Sugar. Mm. The great thing about something like this is because you're not buying those cereals covered in sugar, um, it's a lot cheaper. You know, porridge is one of the cheapest cereals on the market. Yeah.